Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Brent and welcome to part 9 of my tutorial series on how to create the game Super Mario Bros. So in this video, we're actually going to take a small little break and use this video to clean up some of our code. We're going to be separating out our uh, box 2D world creator. Uh, so it'll take in a tile map and the world and then render all the different box 2D uh, bodies uh, to it. We're also going to be creating uh, brick and coin classes. And for right now, we're just going to put uh, the creation of the box 2D objects inside of those classes. And then we're going to... Uh, um, go back and do some uh, disposing of resources. So if you're interested in all this kind of stuff, stick with me. So the first thing we're going to do is separate out these uh, box 2D body uh, creators here that we're taking and putting inside the world. And we're going to put that into a new class. First, we're going to create a package called tools. Second, we're going to make a Java class in here called B2 world creator. And inside here, we'll create a constructor, public B2 world creator. It's going to take in a world and a tiled map called map. And let's bring in all of our, yeah, moving along. Bring in both of our, let's see. There we go. Now, what we'll do is we'll go back to our play screen. We're going to copy all of this stuff. And we're going to put it into our new class. So copy, delete it. Go back to our world creator. Inside the constructor, make sure you're importing all the correct libraries, and it looks like we are. So uh, now go back to the play screen. We're going to say new uh, B2 world creator. Pass it our world and our map. And then let's go ahead and hit the run button and make sure everything is functioning functioning as it used to. Um, so this is a little bit of separation of code. Uh, we did this and now we're going to do a little bit more inside the world creator. But okay, everything looks like it's still functioning correctly. So let's move on. So we've been a little careless previously. We haven't been disposing of our resources. So let's go ahead and do that now. Inside of our play screen, uh, let's dispose of our map. Um, let's dispose of our renderer when, we, uh, when we're done with it. Uh, let's dispose of, let's see, what else do we need to dispose of? Our world and our box 2D debug render. Um, so world.dispose, b2dr.dispose, and then we're going to dispose of our hud.dispose. But our hud doesn't have that function yet, so let's go ahead and say implements disposable from bad logic utils and then of course we need to generate uh, override methods dispose and then we'll say we need to dispose of what do we need to dispose of the stage so stage dot dispose and there we go so next let's go ahead and create two new sprite um, classes the first one being brick and ignore that coin test I was testing earlier. And the next one being coin. Let's also create one uh, extra class here called interactive tile object. And we're gonna make this an abstract class. And inside this class, we need a private world world a private a tiled map uh, map a private tile tiled map tile called tile a private uh, rectangle rectangle for bounds and a private body body Let's get all these things in here. There we go. Now let's create the constructor here. Public interactive tile object. And it can take in a, it needs to take in a world, um, a map, a tiled map, map, and a rectangle bounds. And then all we'll do is say this 
world equals world, this map equals map, and this uh, this dot bounds equals bounds. So inside the coin uh, class here, we're going to extends interactive tile map object, and then create a public coin constructor that takes in a world tile map. And I misspelled that tile map, and then a rectangle bounds. Let's get in all of our tiled map, sorry. And then we'll say super world map and bounds. So let's go ahead and create our coin inside of this class. And to create a box 2D thing, you know you need. Uh, body def b def equals new b def body def. We need a fixture def. Um, we'll call this f def equals new fixture def. We need a polygon shape. Polygon shape, and we'll call this shape equals new polygon shape. Now let's go into this B2 world creator. We'll copy this here, go back to coin, and we'll paste this in. We'll have to change all of these to uh, bounds. Let's do that really quick. Bounds, bounds, bounds. Bounds, one more, bounds. And I made a mistake in the interactive tile object. These should all be protected, not private. So we'll use that and that should fix our error here. So inside of our B2 world creator, let's go ahead and delete this line here or all those lines. We'll say new coin with our world map and rectangle. We need to bring in coin. There we go. And I'm so sorry, but I think I'm actually going to change this a little bit. I'm going to copy this because this is gonna be the same for a coin or a brick. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this inside the interactive tile object. So just paste it right here. And so uh, the coin will just be for right now, just super world map and bounds. Now we're gonna do the same for brick extends uh, interactive tile map object. We'll create the constructor public brick world world um, tile map map and um, rectangle rectangle bounds. And then we'll super the world, the map and the bounds. Make sure we get everything in here. There we go. And the tile map. We need to, what? Oh, it's always tiled map, not tile map. There we go. Okay. Now we can go back to our B2 world creator. We can take all this out and also say new brick world map and rect. Let's bring in the brick. There we go. And now we can test it. So I've hit play here. Let's go ahead and test and see if we broke anything with all those code refactoring. Um, we didn't, we still have collision with our coins. We still have collision with our bricks. So that's awesome. We didn't break anything, plus one. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something. We didn't get very far with the functional aspects of our game, but we definitely learned a whole lot about better programming practices. I'm not claiming they're the best or anything like that, but we definitely needed to clean some things up and I think we did so in a more object-oriented design. We also disposed of all of our resources, which will help in memory management in the future. Uh, so if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it, but more importantly, please share it if you did like it. Uh, if you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I give you two big thumbs up for that. I appreciate everybody watching and I'll catch you guys next time.
So one more thing I wanted to add is I've recently added all my tutorials to a platform called Pupil that you can get at the Google Play Store. Um, basically, it's for educators to have a little bit better communication with their students. Uh, all my tutorials are laid out in a linear fashion with extra resources. So if you're interested in checking that out, go ahead and look in the description below on how to set up an account. Um, and I'll catch you guys next time.